Welcome to Code Jogging. In this video, we are going to look at button navigation with scaffold. In the previous video, we looked at top up bar with scaffold, and we are going to continue from there. Now, for us to work on the button navigation, let me give you a typical example. If you use an if you use um Instagram app, you realize that they provided the menu at the bottom of your screen. That's where you can click on your profile, search home, and then the reels and a lot of menus there that you can um make selection from. They did that with the help of the button navigation. Okay, so in this video, that's what we are going to look at. We are going to create a simple button navigation so now what we are going to do is we are now going to add the button navigation so let's collapse our code here and we can make our code look simple so let's move this code and then create a function for it let's make it top up bar um or let's make it a custom top up bar and then paste our code here okay so let's add the experimenter to it yes now we can call it inside here so we can then add our button bar to it mm -hmm. okay so now let's run our code and make sure that everything is working okay before we continue okay so now we are going to add the bottom navigation to it what we are going to do is we are now going to add um three maximum of three menu okay so we can do that by calling the navigation bar okay and then we call the item that is the navigation item and it accepts um, one required parameter so here should be a boolean it's selected so let's make it false okay and then we can then add the icon to it so we can add the icon here and then we add the icon to fill then we make this one home so let's add the description to it home okay so we can copy and paste we can copy and paste and then we run this let's run this one so let's change this one to let's say account and let's change this one to settings okay so now let's run the app and then see the output yes so now you can see that we've added our button navigation that's um home account and then settings so what we can do here is we can because we've made the selected force that's the reason why none of this data is selected okay so let's change the account to true okay and then let's run it again yes now you can, you can see that it's selected okay so what we've done here is we've um we've hard coded the items it's not dynamic so if the user clicks on home we want the home to be selected and if the user click on account we want the account to be selected and if the user click on the settings we want the settings to be selected we don't need to come to our code and change it anytime you we want to change the selected state so what we can do is we rather have to use the for loop okay so we are going to create a list of items here so var um items then we call the list of 
okay then we will, we are going to add icons to it okay so icons one icons two and the icons three so the last one is settings and then this one is account circle okay so now what we are going to do is we are no more interested in all these things let's remove it then we are going to use for each so we are going to make it data then we will move this one inside it and then this one becomes data okay so here we have to use for loop each index so that we can get the index yes here we go yes so now with the help of the for each index we can then listen to the selected data so we have to also create a variable let's say selected index by remember mutable mutable states that's an integer so is zero default is zero so default we want the home to be selected so let's import okay and then now let's import the set value okay so if the selected index equals the index then now particular icon should be selected okay so now let's run our code and then see if we will, we will achieve the same goal okay so now default we've selected a home let's click on the account okay so yes yes it's not working because we are not updating our selected data here so then selected data equals index let's run our code again okay so now let's select the account yes and now any item you we select becomes the selected data here okay so now with the help of the for each index we've made our code simple now we want to add a label to it how are we going to achieve that now instead of using the icons here we are going to use pair okay so this is how we are going to do it too then we add home to it and i'm talking about this pair pair comes in the form of first data and then the second data the first data can be any data type and the second data too can be any data type okay so in case you are not familiar with um pair you can google it pair you can google it by finding um pair in kotlin and then you get a lot of tutorials on that and we are hoping we can also make videos on that too videos for um actual kotlin code so for now we are going to use the pair and now we are going to add two and this one will be account and then here two here becomes settings okay so we have to call the first is the icon and then let's add the label okay so we are going to add the test and then it's going to be data second okay so let's run our code again and see whether we're able to add the label to it yes now we were able to add the label to our button navigation so that's how we were able to use the pair to achieve this instead of hard coding the items in our project okay so here one thing we are supposed to look at is it's advisable for us to move our code into a function so we are going to create a custom um, navigation bar 
and then we will move this code into it so let's go to here and then create composable function then you add custom navigation bar and then we paste then it's asking for these two because i've said that if you write all your codes in the main function here it means that anytime the user clicks on this one or that or the user performs an um, on click function here and then you are updating a state it refreshes the whole app instead of refreshing the particular portion the person click so for us to uh, prevent ourselves from facing such issues then we've created a custom navigation bar here so that if the user selects on this the event happens only here it doesn't affect the entire app so now let's call this function inside our button navigation here okay so now let's run our app yes now you can see that it's work it's running smoothly because we have few codes here that's the reason why we don't see the effect once we start adding the images and a lot of stuff to it if you write the code inside the main function then we will start seeing that our code will start lagging or the ui will start lagging or it will start running slow which will affect the performance okay so here what we what we can do next is let's assume we have a data here okay let's assume we have a data here um let me add a column uh, the content to it then we have a line center so let's add test and then we said page zero okay let's say yeah page zero fine so now we want to load um no, let me make it loaded page is yes so we, what we want to do is when the user clicks on this one we want to load the home page when the user clicks on this one we want to load the account page and then when the user clicks on settings we want to load the settings page so what we are going to do is we are going to display the data here that shows when the user clicks on this one the current page we are on so let's run our app and see okay so now we've displayed our message here so let's create or let's declare a variable here so var current page by um current page by um remember so this one let's make it for the sake of we don't want to dive um into the ease of triple pair and a lot of um, parameters or a lot of objects that you can use so now let's stick to only the first so we are going to make this as an integer here okay so um as a string here so we are going to display it as this okay and the default page here is the default page here is home but we are not going to type home here we want to pick the default from the list so instead of having this list here we can make it as a global instead of a local um variable so this is what we can do let me scroll a little bit and then scroll to the end and then shift command this then i'll get everything then we can create a function for it so we can create a composable function okay let's see um menu okay and then let's use this let's see what is returning yes it's returning pair okay so let's import this image so now we are going to use it here okay so we can also come and then use it here then they will tell us that 
Okay, let's remove the composable function here. Yes, so we can still use the menu and then we are going to use the first. Okay, so we are going to use the first or no, so that if nothing exists, we still we want to run into um, exception or runtime error. So now let's run the code and see the output. Okay, so we are okay. Then let's add the first. Yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't add the first to it, so that we 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 will get the test inside it. Okay, the first that's the icon. So the second is the title. Let me check. It. Yes, second is the title. Okay, so let me run the code once again. Yes. So now we've loaded the home page. So when you click on the account page, you want it to update this page. So we can do that by using a call, a callback function in our custom navigation bar unit that receives a string. Okay, so wherever whenever the user clicks on this we are calling back data dot second okay then we are assign so now we don't need this we have to call this one as callback now this is the value that we are going to work on so now we will assign the current page to the callback so now let's run our code again okay so now let's click on the account yes now you can see that we've switched account page and then settings so this is a sample of um top out bar and bottom navigation with scaffold so that's what we were supposed to learn in the previous video and then this video and i believe you've understood how to use the scaffold with top up bar and the bottom navigation in case you have any questions you can leave it at the comment section and if you have suggestions that can help us to improve this channel and then make it better for um, beginners in coding you're always welcome you can send us a mail through the channel mail that has been provided at the description one we will respond to it once we receive it and then we see how we can implement your idea you are always welcome and thank you for watching this video see you in our next video bye bye